Ken Kaplan from the New England Motorcycle Museum. And uh, this thing is an absolute blast. It's a Honda two-stroke scooter, 1987, and it's in mint condition. Our shop just went through the whole thing. It's only got 2,000 miles on it, and it's like brand new. Let me take it for a little rip, and I'll go it. and it's a classic. It's a 1987 low miles. It was owned by an older couple. They had a Honda 50 uh, Spree and an 80. The 50 was the hers and then the 80 was the his. Um, beautiful color, blue and white. Uh, these have a lot of storage on them. There's a, a big storage compartment in the front right here. And uh, there's a big one on the side also. Um, I'm a scooter guy. I, I, I've had several of the Honda Metropolitans, the four-stroke. I actually own a Honda Ruckus scooter right now. My son had one also. We just sold his. Uh, he put 6,000 miles on his in a year. This one only has 2,404 miles. The gauge pack looks like brand new. Um, the uh, levers and the grips and the mirrors, the paint, everything's original on this bike except for we just went right through it. We took the, um, took the cover off the engine, cleaned the engine, uh, pulled the exhaust off it, decarbonize that, put brand new tires on it. Look at these tires, they still have the nubs on them. Uh, about, it's got maybe maybe five miles on it. Front and rear tires and tubes. Um, brand new battery, uh, changed the oils on it. Um, tightened every nut and bolt on it and it's in perfect condition. One of the cool things about this, this is a two stroke. This is an oil injected two stroke. It's much faster off the line than the Honda 50, 50cc four strokes that we have and it's a lot lighter. And I can tell you it's a lot of fun. I've got to sell this thing because I'm losing a lot of staff money. These guys were, after they got it running, they were zooming around on it all afternoon. And uh, pretty much everybody here took it for a ride and they absolutely love it. So um, I gotta get this thing gone before they uh, mess it up. Um, and this, it's fast for a 50. I have it right up here, and I'm gonna read you about it out of the magazine. Uh, I also have the original Honda's owner's manual, right here, the 87 Honda owner's manual. And I've got the registration to it right here. So, um, you can easily register if you wanted to, or you don't have to, because it's a 50. First thing they did when they tested it is they checked the compression. It's got 150 PSI. Spark is perfect. The carb was taken off clean. The fuel uh, vacuum and petcock were clean. The air filter was clean. Put brand new fuel lines in it. Cleaned out the gas tank. Brand new tires and a brand new battery. Um, they put uh, four hours of labor into the bike, and then an hour into a cleaning, waxing, steam cleaning, and detailing it. So there's five hours of labor. We charge $80 an hour, so it's $400 in labor. Then the tires, front and rear, and the battery were $112. So we just put $540 on this bike. This isn't like you're buying a scooter that needs some work. This has gone through front to back by licensed technicians in a licensed Connecticut DMV certified shop. So this thing's pretty much perfect mechanically. Not pretty much, it is perfectly mechanically. I'm gonna read you about the the article I read, the, the, the Aero 50 Honda was Honda's first fully modern 50cc scooter sold in North America, thus completing the idea which started with the Express SR. Honda named the scooter the Aero 50 for the US and Canadian markets. The NV50 was introduced in North America in 1983, alongside its Aero 80 sibling, which we have. We have the, we have the older brother, the bigger brother of this one also. We bought two of them, like I told you. That one will be coming up for sale tomorrow also. The NV50 was sold until 1987 with a major update made for the 1985 model year using a new body design and motor. Both engines of the Aero 50 are peppy and well suited for around town use. The later model adds a great amount of storage with its glove box, which I just showed you. That's for the 85 to 87 model. This is an 87. And storage in the right side panel, which I just showed you. The AF05E engine found in the 85 to 87 Aero 50s carried on after this screw was discontinued inside the SE50 and the SA50. The Aero 50 was a very important model for Honda as it marked the beginning of their modern scooter era. This scooter features plastic body panels, electric start, automatic oil injection, automatic choke, and a D-Matic CVT transmission. The initial generation of the Aero 50 used a similar engine design to the Honda Spree, but the Aero 50 utilized a multi-ratio variator to put the power to the rear wheel, whereas the Spree used an inferior single speed design. 
So this has a CVT transmission. A proper running Aero 50 tops out at around 40 miles per hour. And the, the 85 to 87 miles can be modified to go quite a bit faster. That's the thing about this two stroke. Unlike the four stroke, this is very easily modified. They even make a 65cc big port kit for this thing. This thing rides wheelies stock the way it is. You can really make it a ripper. You can make this thing go over 55 miles an hour without spending a lot of money. All you have to do is go to vtcycles.com. That's one of the sites. And there's a couple other on the internet. Um, Honda's introduced a brand new generation of NV50 for 85. This is the, the new design. Uh, included an updated look, a new engine, a glove box, and a few other tweaks to make it more comfortable. Honda changed the style by removing the front rack, integrating the rear lights into the scooter's body, and making the styling more flowy. I mean, this is a 1987. This bike's 30 years old. It still looks thoroughly modern. It's sharp, the colors pop, and it looks right at home in a showroom with the new bikes. Um, the, uh, uh, all the body panels were new for this year, and to make the Aero 50 more comfortable, Honda added a plusher leading link front suspension, so the whole front end's new on this one, in addition to wider bodywork and a bigger seat. I'm six foot two, 245 pounds. This thing hauls the mail with me on it. I can only imagine what a 120 pound girl, how fast or, or, or a young guy. Lastly, Honda replaced existing cubby hole storage spots on either side of the frame to with a proper locking glove, glove box. So the glove box is locking if you're going to school or shopping or whatever, you wanna leave your, your uh, wallet or your purse in there or your gun, whatever, it, it's locking. Um, Honda made a few changes for 86 to the new engine. Most notably, Honda beefed up the crankshaft and changed the intake manifold and reed cage to a four bolt design. The 86 intake manifolds use a different bolt pattern on the engine, so, you, so you, um, it's specific to that year. They also bought back the Kickstarter and throttle controlled oil pump for 86. For performance modifications, I talked about this earlier. See, here's the Kickstarter. You can kickstart this bike or you can do the uh, electric starter on it. For performance, the 86 and the 87 Aero 50s, this is an 87, are the best years because of their features and because of the potential to upgrade them to gain more speed. You can upgrade an 85, 86, or 87 with a big bore kit, but the different intake manifold pattern means that are that you are um, going to keep the stock car breeds and intake unless you get into some custom work. For the 86 to 87 models, which this one is, you can get big bore kits up to 65 cc's intakes, reeds, carbs, and even gears. Top speed in the 50 to 55 hour range are easily possible. Uh, Hondaspree.net is a place to go if you want to learn more about this. Again, Honda, www.hondaspree.net. The 87 Elite 50, which is this, the SE50, and the 88 to 93 Elite LX SA50 share a virtually identical model engine. So this is the same engine up to 93. So any of the parts intended for the up to 93 SA50 will, will work. I believe only the intake manifold bolt pattern is different between the Aero 50 and, and the Elites. Um, so check out that webpage if you're going to be adding aftermarket parts or just rebuilding your engine. Again, this engine is like brand new, it means nothing. I'm just telling you, there's a ton of potential on this thing if you want to make it a little screamer. You will absolutely, this thing will rip a house off a foundation compared to the four stroke. The four stroke's like a load compared to this. This thing's in that you can make these absolute fire breathing 55 mile an hour dragons without spending a lot of money. Um, the author has written a nice guide to fixing up his Aero 50 with, into good running condition and then rebuilding the engine with go fast parts. If you're looking for an affordable, this is a discussion, if you're looking for an affordable, peppy and reliable two stroke scoot, the Aero 50 is a great choice. You can also find these, find these examples with very low miles that have been in storage for years like this one has. These scooters are very reliable, so all you need to do is get some fresh gas and oil in it, change a plug, maybe clean the carb and get a battery, and you'll be set for years of reliable scootering. There may be other problems depending on how your scooter will be stored and treated once you sort these out, but it will be a reliable scooter. Again, we've gone through this one. There's no problems with this one. It was worked on by our professional mechanics. Everything's been gone through on it. And the great thing about buying an 80s Japanese scooter is that they sell for way less than an Italian scooter does, since you aren't paying for the name or the collector's value. I, I'd argue with that a little bit. I'd say this is a collector's value. It's a 30-year-old Honda. Normally, a non-running Honda Aero 50 will sell for four to 600, and an Aero 50 in good running condition will sell for nine to 11. This one's not only good running, but it has brand new tires, brand new battery, the, the carbs clean, the, uh, everything's been gone through on it, the exhaust has been cleaned up. Uh, and you can still get many of the OEM parts for these scooters, and the discontinued parts can be found with a bit of work on sites like eBay. Finding the right parts can be half the fun if you're going to hop it up. Honda sold a decent assortment of accessories for the Aero 50, including they, they had a windscreen for it, a music pack, 
a tote box, a rubber floor mat, wire and mesh front baskets, a front box, a rear wire basket, a seat cover, body cover, decal and stripe kits, and a front rack for the 85 to 87 model. So if you look online, you can find all kinds of extras for this thing. As you can imagine, it's, it's possible to equip your Aero 50 with a remarkable amount of storage space. And this one comes with a rack on the back and, again, the two stock glove boxes. Overall, the Aero 50 is an awesome scooter. It's stylish, reliable, peppy, and it has great storage. If you're buying one, keep, keep an eye open for the updated 85 to 87 version. This is the 87 version because it has a glove box and you can buy aftermarket parts for it. The Aero 50 has an enduring look, which I mentioned earlier, that's held up better than the two-stroke 50s that followed her in the 80s and 90s year, like, years, like the Elite 50 SR or the Yamaha Jog. Those look funny by today's standards. This scooter looks awesome in 2016. Um, since they can be ahead so affordably, an Aero 50 makes sense for anyone. So, um, pros, great storage, peppy, performance parts available, and it's Honda reliability. 49.3 cc two-stroke engine, rated for 3.9 horsepower, 6,000 RPM, electric start, kick start, belt drive, uh, super light, fast, um, and uh, easy to work on. So, I mean, what's not to love about it? Uh, you can't go wrong. Buying a Honda scooter, especially one that's been gone through by the pros at the New England Motorcycle Museum. Um, if you buy this bike, all proceeds are going to the New England, to the New England Motorcycle Museum restoration fund. And uh, you know, good luck bidding on it. I'm gonna take a ride into the museum. Good luck bidding and God bless. Don't miss out. We hardly ever get scooters like this in this kind of shape. A vintage scooter in mint condition that's just been gone through.